Even if you are not interested in human paleontology, the study of Stone Age females is both a fascinating and enlightening subject. According to paleoanthropologists, Homo neanderthalensis, also known as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, was a late archaic form of Homo sapiens that diverged from modern human lineages no earlier than 500,000 years ago and largely disappeared by 40,000 years ago. Ultimately, the physical adaptability of modern humans may have contributed to their survival, while Neanderthals, despite their strength, eventually disappeared. Meanwhile, the Cro-Magnons, the first anatomically modern Europeans, lived around 40,000 to 20,000 years ago. Cro-Magnon women were tall and robust compared to many modern human populations due to their tropical heritage. They had broad shoulders, strong limbs and thick bones, indicating a highly active lifestyle, including their women. Estimates based on skeletal remains suggest that Cro-Magnon women typically stood between 1.6 to 1.7 meters, about 5 feet 5 inches to 5 feet 7 inches, in height, though some would have been taller, and they had larger brains than humans today. Both Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal women were physically strong, and adapted to their respective environments, but they had key differences in height, body proportions, strength, and lifestyle. These differences were shaped by their evolutionary backgrounds and the distinct climates in which they evolved. Indeed, the shorter and stockier Neanderthal woman had 10% more muscle mass than modern European men. Her muscles were very dense and muscular, especially her arms, as indicated by the muscle attachments on her bones. But because of this quirk of her physiology, she would be able to wrestle a modern man to the ground without a problem. Just how strong were Neanderthal females? We have very few female Neanderthal and other ancient female skeletons. But the data we do have suggests that ancient females were as strong as hell. In fact, they were much stronger than modern females as well as modern males. Scientists also examined the remains of La Ferrassi II a female Neanderthal found in a French cave in 1909. She had 10% more muscle than modern European men, and her upper arm strength was sufficient to slam even the strongest man to the table without a problem, according to experts on the subject. If a Neanderthal woman fought a Cro-Magnon woman, the Neanderthal woman would likely win in sheer strength, but the Cro-Magnon would have better agility and stamina. Neanderthal women had an exceptional level of upper body strength, with muscular arms and shoulders that suggest they engaged in intense physical activities, possibly including direct participation in hunting. In fact, the density and thickness of the bones of Neanderthal women indicate that they were capable of grip strength similar to elite modern athletes. Neanderthal female physiology prioritized strength, endurance, and reproduction, reflecting their physically demanding environment and lifestyle. This is consistent with the evolutionary pressures that shaped their bodies, which emphasized function and efficiency. Yet, Neanderthal woman's brain cases averaged around 1,300 cubic centimeters, which is comparable to modern females. The differences in body structure also influenced the roles that Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal women played in their societies. Neanderthal women were likely more directly involved in hunting due to their muscular strength. Fossil evidence shows that Neanderthal women had bone injuries, similar to those of male hunters, indicating that took part in high-risk hunting activities. They likely accompanied their men on hunts, likely due to the Neanderthal's small group sizes. The robust nature of the Neanderthal skeleton indicates that both males and females were extremely muscular in comparison to modern humans. Neanderthal bones have muscle attachment points, indicating that they lived a very active life. Neanderthal women of the forest marshes may have dragged beavers from their lodges to use their pelts for making clothing. Neanderthals likely used a glue-like substance made from birch or pine tar to glue hides together making a strong and waterproof seam for clothing and footwear. Female Neanderthals were no delicate creatures. In comparison to anatomically modern humans, both male and female Neanderthals had more muscle mass and experienced higher upper extremity loading than Homo sapiens. For example, the Gibraltar One skull is one of the most important female Neanderthal remains ever discovered. 
providing information about the morphology, behavior, and genetics of these extinct relatives of modern humans. It was discovered in Gibraltar in 1848 by Dorothy Garrod, predating the well-known Neanderthal discoveries in Germany, but its significance was not immediately recognized. The Gibraltar I skull was discovered at Forbes Quarry, which is on the northern face of the Rock of Gibraltar. This discovery was significant because it took place nearly a decade before the first known Neanderthal specimen was discovered in the Neander Valley in 1856. Despite its significance, the skull received little attention for several years until archaic human fossils from the Neander Valley in Germany sparked scientific interest. The Neanderthal fossil shows a powerful race with the most distinct brow ridges of any known hominid. Thea massive and heavy face is much more simian in appearance than modern man, with enormous inflated brow ridges that are particularly conspicuous and extended, especially at the lateral angles. Neanderthals also had significantly thicker necks than modern humans to support their massive elongated skulls. Both the back of the skull and the powerful chinless jaw have muscle attachments that indicate such a powerful neck. Even females of the Neanderthal race had thick brow ridges and strong necks to support skulls that held their massive brains. The hormonal condition of ancient humans should also be taken into account when discussing their physical attributes. Estrogen is considered the female hormone, whereas testosterone is considered the male hormone. However, both hormones are present in both men and women to different levels. Surprisingly, women actually possess more testosterone than estrogen. Their testosterone levels remain significantly lower than men's, but Neanderthal women likely possessed much higher levels of testosterone than modern women if the hormonal condition of their male counterparts is any indication. What's more, researchers discovered that early prehistoric European female skeletons had bone densities comparable to those of modern female athletes. The largest female Neanderthal specimen ever discovered, unearthed at Grotte du Prince near the French Riviera and dated to around 100,000 years ago, is estimated to have weighed 75 kilos, around 165 pounds. Because of her large size, the fossil was originally thought to be from a male individual, implying she was an absolute unit. Meanwhile, the Jin Yushan specimen, possibly a Denisovan, is estimated to have weighed approximately 78.5 kilos, 173 pounds, making her the largest female specimen in the fossil record, and she would have been a shot-put terror. Human body size peaked during the Middle Pleistocene, so the specimen size is unsurprising given her high latitude and cold climate. Body mass is calculated using a formula that considers bone length and circumference, and Neanderthaloid humans had massive bones. In one study of ancient human body mass, estimates from 26 Neanderthal specimens revealed an average weight of 63 to 66 kilos, 140 to 146 pounds, for females, indicating a significantly higher average body mass than modern and ancient Homo sapiens. Modern females and Neanderthal women most likely had similar birth processes, but only a few ancient human skeletons have been identified as females. Female Neanderthals, like gorillas, had larger pelvises and a lower center of gravity than Homo sapiens, making them skilled grapplers. Archaeologists have discovered many Neanderthals, both men and women, had massive forearms, possibly as a result of a life spent stabbing woolly mammoths and straight-tusked elephants to death and dismantling their carcasses. Men and women would have taken part in the latter activity, as well as transporting hundreds of kilos of meat many miles up steep mountainsides to their caves. The Neanderthal represents an evolutionary stage in this evolution that is unquestionably distant from the beginning, resembling but not identical to modern man. For example, the analysis of Neanderthal lower limb variations indicates that squatting was a common repose position for these Pleistocene hominids. The squatting position, shared by fossil humans and some living peoples, is another ancestral remnant. This demonstrates how individual evolution recalls and replicates the evolution of the ancestral race. Neanderthals are frequently regarded as a stray branch in the human family tree, but new research indicates that the modern human is more likely to be an outlier in human evolution. People have a tendency to draw a straight line from our ancestors to ourselves, 
and any group that does not appear to fall along that line is divergent, distinct, unusual, or strange. Nevertheless, in terms of the evolution of our family tree, we are the outliers, with Neanderthals closer to the centre. Modern humans, for example, are the only members of our family tree who lack prominent brow ridges, the only ones with severely shortened faces, and the only ones with significantly smaller internal nasal cavities. It is important to note that Neanderthals, like Homo sapiens, went through evolutionary changes, and they did not all look the same. Both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens can be classified into three groups, early, middle and late populations, with the latter exhibiting more gracile characteristics as a result of inheriting genes from Homo sapiens. For example, Neanderthal specimens from 300,000 years ago are significantly more physically strong and robust than those from 50,000 years ago. Nonetheless, studies of Neanderthal, the ribcage and pelvis, indicates that Neanderthal women may have had a more difficult time in childbirth than modern women, while also having a greater lung capacity. Meanwhile, these anatomical studies also suggest that Neanderthals had the ability to produce a range of vocal sounds. Their hyoid bone, which supports the tongue and larynx, was similar to that of modern humans, suggesting they could produce speech-like sounds. Additionally, the FOXP2 gene, which is associated with language and speech in modern humans, was also present in Neanderthals, indicating they likely had some form of verbal communication. The language of the Neanderthals remains unknown, but based on genetic and anatomical evidence, it is likely that they had some form of complex spoken communication. Some researchers suggest that Neanderthals may have spoken a proto-language that was distinct from early modern human speech, but still capable of expressing a range of meanings. According to linguists, if we were to reconstruct Neanderthal words, we would need to base it on their proto-language roots using reconstructed proto-Indo-European or proto-Neanderthal linguistic estimates. Some Neanderthal words may have included hantas, meaning hunter, wigras, meaning fighter, wertas, meaning protector, werhak, meaning shield-bearer, thangas, meaning one who stands strong, trakas, meaning tracker, and dazanpak, meaning fire-maker, may have been used to describe domestic duties. These hypothetical words suggest a language built around strength, survival, and direct communication, fitting the lifestyle of Neanderthals. These words would likely be spoken in a short, direct and forceful manner, fitting the intense lifestyle of Neanderthal survival. It has been stated that man's forehead is a mirror of his intelligence. Previously, the Neanderthal skull, with its clearly low-brow characteristics and conformation, was thought to resemble certain large ape skulls, lending support to evolutionary theory. Meanwhile, philosophical naturalists regarded Neanderthal man as a primitive form, narrowing the gap between apes and humans. The skull had a distinct appearance due to its large size, receding forehead, massive orbital ridges, and flattened brain box. Hermann Schaffhausen in Germany and Aldous Huxley in England called it the most bestial of all known human skulls, referring to what they termed its simian characters. Indeed, even an observer with a basic understanding of anatomy finds this fossil man's skull strange. Neanderthals had larger nasal cavities and different vocal tracts compared to modern humans, which means their speech may have sounded deeper, more resonant, and possibly included clicks or throat sounds. Their language might have had fewer vowels and relied more on consonant-heavy words. Neanderthal speech may have sounded deep, guttural, and consonant-heavy with simplified grammar compared to Proto-Indo-European languages. Their language might have lacked complex verb tenses, but relied on repetition, body language, and emphasis to convey meaning. Neanderthals have long been regarded as super-masculine kings of the forest, at least when compared to their human male counterparts, with whom they competed for food, territory, and mates. According to one study, Homo sapiens men essentially emasculated their brawny brethren when they mated with Neanderthal women at least 100,000 years ago. It's impossible to say for certain whether it was mostly female Neanderthals who mated with early modern human males or the other way around. Whatever the case, 
an early Homo sapiens man interbred with a Neanderthal woman around 220,000 years ago. According to computational models, the most plausible explanation for the pattern is that early modern human men mated with Neanderthal women more than 100,000 years ago, but less than 370,000 years ago. Now, we recognize modern humans and Neanderthals as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, according to their overlapping morphology and genetics. With that, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, remain curious and questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.